Our planet has always been a place full of mystery and fascination. From deadly centipede king in Romania to a worm that has been revived after 46,000 years of being frozen in Siberia, here are 10 most terrifying discoveries that shocked the whole world. In Romania's mobile cave, a pitch black poison laden underworld untouched by daylight for over 5.5 million years, a venomous centipede reigns as the apex predator. This cave lies more than 65 feet 20 meters beneath the surface with a warm, oxygen-deprived atmosphere filled with toxic gases that sustain chemosynthetic bacteria. Despite these harsh conditions, the cave supports a diverse community of creatures such as spiders, scorpions, arthropods, snails, earthworms, and cave leeches. Recently, scientists uncovered a new found species within this cryptic realm, the Cryptops speleorex, aptly named the king of the cave. Though the king centipede measures a mere 2 inches 52 millimeters in length, it holds the title of the largest predatory arthropod within this subterranean habitat, commanding its domain with lethal bites. Since its discovery in 1968, Mobile Cave has been rarely explored due to its perilous conditions, featuring high levels of hydrogen sulfide, methane, ammonia, and carbon dioxide, along with scarce oxygen. Although the temperature is rarely comfortable at 70 degrees Fahrenheit 21 degrees Celsius, the humidity reaches 100% and air circulation is virtually absent. Venturing into the cave demands great risk, leading explorers through a long, narrow shaft and winding limestone tunnels that eventually open into a central cavern housing a lake. Further exploration requires underwater diving through tight passages in complete darkness, leading to small air wells. This dark, isolated and toxic kingdom is home to 51 invertebrate species, with 34 of them exclusively found in Mobile Cave. Among them, the recently described Cryptops speleorex exhibits a brownish-yellow body, pale yellow antenna, and legs adorned with 13 to 17 saw teeth. As the supreme invertebrate predator in this ecosystem, the centipede assumes a dominant position in the food chain. The researchers' findings have unveiled that the mobile centipede differs significantly in morphology and genetics from its terrestrial counterpart, having evolved over millions of years into a distinct taxon better adapted to the perpetual darkness of this unique habitat. Scientists have discovered a worm that managed to stretch its short life expectancy by tens of thousands of years. A tiny roundworm was revived after it was frozen in Siberian permafrost 46,000 years ago when Neanderthals still walked the Earth. The Siberian permafrost has long offered the scientific community a window into the organisms of the distant past. Ancient viruses, mummified bodies, and the pseudo-microscopic creatures have been resurrected from the ice over the years. This worm, a previously unknown species of nematode, survived after entering a dormant state known as cryptobiosis. Organisms in a cryptobiotic state can endure the complete absence of water or oxygen and withstand high temperatures, as well as freezing or extremely salty conditions. They remain in a state between death and life, in which their metabolic rates decrease to an undetectable level. Scientists used radiocarbon dating to determine that the soil from the permafrost sample was 46,000 years old. The nematode was found about 130 feet deep within the permafrost inside a burrow once home to arctic goofers. After the chunk of frozen sediment was taken to the lab to thaw, the resurrected nematode crawled out and started making babies. The nematode, a female-only species, reproduces asexually after about 8 to 12 days. The original worm found five years ago has died. Scientists are using its descendants to continue their research on the species, which will primarily involve investigating the genetic machinery behind these organisms to learn how these worms evolved to adapt in extreme environments. That work could reveal how other animals might harbor the genetic superpowers to adapt to extreme environments today. Hunter-gatherers might have built the world's oldest known temple on a precise geometric plan. The Neolithic site, known as Göbekli Tepe, is perched atop a limestone mountain ridge in southeastern Turkey. 
They saw its T-shaped pillars, which are carved with mystic drawings of animals, abstract symbols in human hands, are arranged in a giant circles and ovals. Each structure is made up of two large central pillars surrounded by smaller inward-facing pillars. Göbekli Tepe, which translates to Port Belly Hill in Turkish, was built some 11,000 to 12,000 years ago, hundreds of years before any evidence of farming or animal domestication emerged on the planet. The impressive construction project, which predates Stonehenge by 6,000 years, is a deviation from the hunting and gathering way of life. German archaeologist Klaus Schmidt discovered the site, which appeared to be an ancient place of worship or religious gathering in 1994. The discovery sent shockwaves through the field and challenged a long-lasting theory that organized religion appeared only after cultures began adopting agriculture. But with only a small fraction of the megalith excavated and ground surveys suggesting that at least 50 more of these circular enclosures are hidden underground, there is still much unknown about the site and the hunter-gatherers who built it. One major mystery is how these different circular enclosures related to each other. Were they all used at once or was one built and then abandoned and backfilled before the next was built? To figure this out, scientists measured distances within the enclosures and between the enclosures, the largest of which is more than 65 feet 20 meters in diameter. They found that the two centermost pillars aligned exactly with the midpoint of the circular structures. What's more, when they drew an imaginary line connected the center points of three of the structures, they found that it made a nearly perfect equilateral triangle, or one with three equal length sides. This suggests that these three structures were planned together in advance and built according to a geometric design. A nightmarish fish that typically dwells thousands of feet below the ocean surface washed ashore on a California beach back in 2021. The deep-sea fish, known as an anglerfish, is rather elusive and rarely seen outside of the deep ocean. Exactly how the fish got there is a mystery. To see an actual anglerfish intact is very rare, and it's unknown how or why the fish ended up on the shore. The bizarre creature is normally found at ocean depths of around 3,000 feet 940 meters. More than 200 species of anglerfish are found worldwide, and park officials determined that the specimen in this case is most likely a species of anglerfish called the Pacific footballfish. The fish's mouth sports a number of sharp pointed teeth, and the top of its head featured a long protruding stalk with a bioluminescent bulb at the end, which is used as a lure to empty spray in the darkness of the deep ocean. Female football fish can grow up to 2 feet 0.6 meters long, while male football fish are only about an inch long. The fish's method of reproduction is unusual to say the least. Males latch onto the female with their teeth and become sexual parasites, eventually coalescing with the female until nothing is left of their form but their tests for reproduction. One of the most incredible anglerfish facts has to do with the way they eat. If you have ever seen a vacuum suck something up, then you have an idea of how an anglerfish's mouth works. First, they draw prey close using their bioluminescent lures. Then, once the fish swims just within the range, they rapidly open their large mouth. The resulting suction, similar to the suction employed by catfish, sucks the unfortunate fish in. The source of the light it uses to catch prey is the bacteria that dwell around its fleshy tip used as bait. This tip is called the esca, and it's believed the bacteria and the anglerfish have developed a symbiotic relationship. The reason for this is because this bacteria is usually unable to create the luminescence if it's not connected to the anglerfish. They cannot synthesize the chemicals necessary for this luminescence by themselves. This bacteria can only survive in seawater, and the deep sea habitat of the anglerfish is most suited for their survival. The exact way how the anglerfish finds this bacteria is still unknown. With its long body, sharp teeth and fur, these images show what looks like a monster out of a horror movie. And at first, people were left baffled by the skeleton of the unknown animal, which was found by soldiers washed up on a Russian beach. The images of the skeleton, which first emerged in 2006, were snapped by the soldiers before it was removed from the beach by Russian special forces to carry out an in-depth study of the unknown skeleton. 
But initial tests on the bones and teeth showed that it was not a fish, while the skeleton showed that it wasn't a crocodile or alligator. It was also said to have measured in at around 20 feet long and had skin with hair and fur. But after several marine experts took one look at the pictures of the skeleton's skull, they quickly established that it was a beluga whale. They also released a picture of a whale's skull to show the similarity of the two sets of bones. Before being shown to be beluga whale, theories on what the remains could be had ranged from a whale to a plesiosaur, a prehistoric marine creature from the Triassic period. Legends of the Sakhalin monster date back centuries, with indigenous Aino people recounting tales of an enormous sea serpent that roamed the waters around their island home. Over time, as more people settled in the region, sightings and reports of the creature increased, leading to a blend of folklore and modern accounts. One of the most famous sightings occurred in the 19th century, when Russian explorer Nikolai Slepsov allegedly encountered the Sakhalin monster. According to his account, while sailing near Sakhalin Island, he spotted a colossal creature resembling a gigantic sea serpent. His vivid description sparked interest and curiosity among researchers and cryptozoologists worldwide. As the years passed, additional sightings and encounters were reported by fishermen, sailors and local residents. Some witnesses claimed that the creature exhibited a docile demeanor, while others believed it to be a formidable predator capable of taking down boats and swallowing smaller marine life whole. The St. Augustine monster is a mysterious and enigmatic creature that has left scientists and researchers puzzled for over a century. This massive carcass washed ashore on an Anastasia island near St. Augustine, Florida in November 1896, captivating the imagination of the public and sparking widespread speculation about its origins. The St. Augustine monster was an enormous decomposing mass that measured about 18 feet 5.5 meters long and 7 feet 2.1 meters wide. Witnesses described it as having a gelatinous and rubbery texture with long, fibrous strands. The creature's appearance was so bizarre that it left experts baffled as to what it could be. Speculations regarding the identity of the creature ranged from the fantastical to the mundane. Some believe it could be a sea serpent, while others suggest that it might be a giant octopus or a monstrous whale. At the time, scientific knowledge about marine creatures was limited and many aspects of ocean life remained unexplored. The lack of technology and information made it challenging to identify the St. Augustine monster definitively. Consequently, after a few weeks of examination, the creature's remains deteriorated to a point where a conclusive identification became impossible. In 1896, zoologist Frank Linston conducted a brief examination of the remains and proposed that it might be a decomposed mass of a whale. However, his conclusion was based on limited observation and no comprehensive scientific investigation was conducted. Over the years, various theories have continued to circulate regarding the identity of the St. Augustine monster. Some researchers have suggested that it could have been a basking shark or a giant squid, as these creatures can reach substantial sizes and share some similarities with the initial descriptions of the carcass. In the absence of concrete evidence, the St. Augustine monster remains an unsolved mystery. Despite the lack of definitive answers, the incident sparked interest in marine biology and led to greater exploration and understanding of ocean life. NASA recently announced the discovery of a new Earth-sized planet in the habitable zone of a nearby star called Toei 700. Exoplanet Toei 700e is just over 100 light years from Earth, too far away for humans to visit. But we do know that it's similar in size to Earth, likely rocky in composition and could potentially support life. Habitable planets are those that are just the right distance from their star to have a surface temperature that could sustain liquid water. While it is always exciting to find a new, potentially habitable planet far from Earth, the focus of exoplanet research is shifting away from simply discovering more planets. Instead, researchers are focusing their efforts on finding and studying systems most likely to answer key questions about how planets form, how they evolve and whether life might exist in the universe. Toei 700e stands out from many of these other planets' discoveries because it's well suited for future studies that could help answer big questions about the conditions for life outside the solar system. 
It takes TOEI 700E about 28 days to orbit its star, and it may also be a tidally locked planet, meaning it spins only once per orbit and only one side always facing the star. It is similar to how only one side of the Moon is always facing Earth. TOEI 700E represents one of the many exciting exoplanet discoveries that have expanded our knowledge of the cosmos and the possibilities of other habitable worlds. As our understanding of exoplanets and their potential for hosting life continues to evolve, TOEI 700E will remain a fascinating target for further research and exploration, driving us closer to answering one of the humanity's most profound questions – are we alone in the universe? Claims that Homo naledi buried their dead could alter our understanding of human evolution. Homo naledi is an extinct hominin species that was first discovered in the rising star cave system in South Africa in 2013. The fossils discovered at the site were remarkably well preserved and exhibited a unique blend of primitive and more modern features. The discovery of Homo naledi was groundbreaking because it represented a new and previously unknown branch of the hominin family tree. In 2015, researchers announced their findings about the Dinaledi chamber, a remote section of the cave system where the Homo naledi remains were found. The Dinaledi chamber was an isolated location, and the presence of Homo naledi fossils deep within the cave system sparked discussions about how these individuals ended up there. Some researchers think that the bodies might have been intentionally placed there, suggesting a form of burial behavior. The notion of burial has been associated with more advanced cognitive abilities, complex social structures and ritualistic practices. Previously, such behaviors were primarily attributed to Homo sapiens and their closest evolutionary relatives like Neanderthals. If it turns out that Homo naledi intentionally buried their dead, it could indicate that the development of ritualistic behavior and symbolic thought occurred much earlier in our evolutionary history than previously believed. The engravings form almost hashtag-like symbols, not unlike some of the early art found in other parts of South Africa. This has led to the speculation that perhaps these engravings are in fact a subsequent addition to the cave by a later hominin, such as our own species Homo sapiens. Intriguingly, there is also apparent evidence of fire in the cave system. This would presumably have been necessary if any hominin was exploring so deep within the caverns, but the questions of who made the fire is much harder to answer. Could it have been later humans who explored the caves and left their marks on the walls, or was it all exclusively made by the much early Hermann Naledi? At the moment, this question is impossible to answer. In 1994, archaeologists digging in the Atapuerca Mountains in northern Spain discovered the fossilized remains of an archaic group of humans unlike any other ever seen. The bones were cut and fractured, and appeared to have been cannibalized. The largest skeletal fragments, which came from at least six individuals and dated to at least 800,000 years ago, shared some similarities with modern humans, Homo sapiens, plus other now extinct human relatives like Neanderthals and Denisovans, but were just different enough to defy classification as any known species. Researchers ultimately named the previously unknown hominins Homo antecessor, borrowing the Latin word for predecessor. Because the bones were among the oldest Homo fossils ever found in Europe, some researchers speculated that Homo antecessor may have been the elusive common ancestor of Neanderthals, Denisovans, and modern humans. Now, a new study of Homo antecessor's DNA, the single oldest sample of human genetic material ever analyzed, argues that that's probably not the case. In the study published April 1st in 2020 in the journal Nature, researchers sequenced the ancient proteins in the enamel of an 1800,000-year-old Homo antecessor tooth, using the proteins to decipher the portion of genetic code that created them. After comparing that code with genetic data from more recent human tooth samples, the team concluded that Homo antecessor's DNA was too different to fit on the same branch of the evolutionary tree as humans, Neanderthals and Denisovans. The context of the discovery in a site known for evidence of cannibalism added a chilling dimension to our understanding of ancient human behaviors. The signs of cannibalism found among the remains at Cima de los Huesos 
are believed to be related to ritualistic practices or cultural beliefs rather than a source of nutrition. The discovery of such ancient DNA provides scientists with an unparalleled opportunity to learn more about the genetic diversity and relationships of early human populations. It offers a glimpse into a previously uncharted chapter of human evolutionary history, giving us new perspectives on the complexity of human migrations and interactions in deep time. Giant viruses lurking in the soils of a New England forest sport traits never seen in other viruses of similar heft, from star-like outer shells to bizarre tubular appendages. Giant viruses are typically larger than most, ranging from 0.2 to 1.5 micrometers and are found in oceans, arctic lakes and melting permafrost. While newly found bizarre virus-like particles may strike fear in some, the researchers said that these are not likely a threat to humans but are very important players of the ecosystem. Although the viruses discovered by researchers have unique physical features, they are not the first giant viruses known to humanity. For instance, in 2003, scientists discovered a virus that mimicked bacteria. It is known as mimivirus and was found hidden inside the cytoplasm of an amoeba. The virus also has a big brother called the mamavirus. While a mimivirus can grow up to 600 nanometers, the biggest discovered by the researchers measured 690 nanometers in length. However, these size comparisons stand nowhere against Pithavirus sibericum, a 1,500 nanometers long virus found buried inside a 30,000 year old ice structure in Siberia. To this date, it is the biggest virus ever discovered. Scientists believe the newly discovered giant virus will enhance our knowledge of the great virus biodiversity around us. It will also help us explore how we could use these microorganisms to benefit our ecosystem.